Uh, Sarah Tabrisi is uh, from um, England, and, uh, or the UK, I guess you'd have to say. So uh, she trained with a woman named Anita Harding, who did some of the most spectacular work before we knew about CAG repeat disorders being CAG repeat disorders, but she defined many of the subtypes of it. And she was, she was on the road to leading the um, Queen Square Institute of Neurology in London, which is sort of the premier thing when uh, she died um, prematurely of cancer. And, um, but she trained Sarah Tabrisi. And Sarah Tabrisi has just exploded and is now, she collaborates with Jill Bates, who also is uh, a younger version of uh, some old gray hairs like us. And um, it is just so wonderful to have her here. Uh, she is going to tell us about the very exciting work that's going on to actually reduce Huntington levels in the brain. And this strategy is working in other diseases. It's going to work. So uh, I can't wait to hear her talk. Thank you so much. And I'm deeply honored to be invited here to come and tell you about uh, some of my work, which um, Francis Collins is a very hard act to follow. Um, uh, I'm going to also tell you about work that is a result of a collaboration and a long-standing collaboration that I have had with many colleagues, but particularly with Frank Bennett and colleagues at Ionis Pharmaceuticals. So how far have we come? Um, and I've used the slide for a number of years. But I think progress is really being made, and Francis outlined some of that work, and real potential treatments for Huntington's disease are now being tested in the clinic. So I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of how you develop drugs for a disease like Huntington's disease, because it's complex. So the drug development pipeline involves drug discovery, where you identify targets, you find or make molecules. You then have to test them in cells and animals, including Huntington's disease animals and larger animals. You then have to do testing for tox toxicology or if the drug is safe, and then you do clinical trials in humans and eventually get approval. Now, this is a long process. Phase one trials of the clinical trials are with very small numbers of patients, usually 10 to 12 patients. Phase two is smaller number of patients, usually between 20 and 50. And phase three is large studies worldwide with hundreds of patients to look and to see if your drug is slowing the disease. And so the perspective of the human body and developing drugs, I think it's, I like to think of the stars in our galaxy. There are 100,000 million stars in our galaxy. But we are much more complex. If you times that by 100, that is the number of cells in the human body, 10 million million. So that we are all unique individuals, and the complexity of the human and the human brain is what makes developing and testing drugs more challenging. So this is the perspective, and Francis already talked a bit about this. We are made up of proteins, which are the machines that make us us. DNA is the recipe book. You have one gene, one recipe. And it results in a message which makes the protein, which makes us us. So this is the essential aspects of cell biology. If you take it to Huntington disease, the Huntington gene makes the Huntington message, which makes the Huntington protein. And as Francis outlines, it's the toxic mutant Huntington disease-causing protein. And so back to the gene message protein, and then linking that to Huntington lowering. So what we want to do is to try and reduce the amount of the toxic mutant Huntington protein in patients. And this is done through a number of different ways which Francis outlined, but I'm gonna to talk to you about 
antisense oligonucleotides, which I'll come on and explain, bind to the Huntington message and result in less of the Huntington protein, less of the bad, toxic Huntington protein. So it's often called gene silencing therapy, which is actually not really the, the best name for it. It's Huntington lowering therapy, because you never eliminate the toxic mutant protein, but you want to lower it as much as possible to prevent production. And there are many approaches, as Francis outlined, and I'm going to come on and talk about ASOs for short. So the challenges of getting drugs to the human brain are immense. Huntington lowering drugs don't cross the blood-brain barrier, and the blood-brain barrier is a barrier around our brain that protects it from the outside world. It protects it from infections, and it protects it from the environment. And so there are a number of delivery methods, and this is why it's taken a long time to get these drugs to, to potential trials. You can either deliver it into the spinal fluid, which bathes your brain, into the brain's ventricles, which are uh, uh, fluid-filled spaces in the brain, or directly injected into the brain tissue. And it's the, there is a brain size issue in Huntington's disease and in all research for neurological and neurodegenerative conditions. And what I'm saying is relevant to diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and ALS. So this is a mouse brain. It's tiny. And this is a small monkey. This is a large non-human primate. And this is our brain. So you want to be able to deliver these drugs to a large human brain. And that's part of the challenge of developing these drugs is that you have to target the brain. And so I'm going to tell you about a work that we've done and uh, work I've done with um, Ionis Pharmaceuticals. A lot of work went into this of ways of infusing the drug into the spinal fluid to reach the brain. And this is done through a lumbar puncture into the uh, uh, lower part of the spinal region, and you inject the drug into the spinal fluid. And the, the, uh, the important thing about this drug is that it rapidly spreads up to the brain. And so I'm going to tell you briefly about Ionis Huntington RX, which is an antisense oligonucleotide, which Francis introduced, and I mentioned it's an ASO binds to the Huntington message and reduces the amount of the toxic, bad Huntington protein. And it's a single strand of chemically altered DNA. And it's in, we infuse this ASO into the spinal fluid of patients, where we know from a lot, lot of large animal work that it rapidly diffuses up and reaches the brain. The, the nature of the chemistry of this drug is that it diffuses rapidly into the brain tissue, diffuses easily into nerve cells and other brain cells that are supporting cells. So the drug is called Ionis Huntington RX. It's safe and effective in animal models. It's been tested in five different animal models, including large non-human primates. It's been tested in long-term safety. And there were 10 years of testing in many different models before starting the trial in humans. And that included three different Huntington's disease mouse models and then onto larger animals. A lot of the work to test the, how the drug reached the brain was done in larger animals with brains not quite as big but nearer the, our size. So we've dosed 46 patients with early Huntington's disease in Canada and Europe. The trial started as a first-in-man study, so it was a phase one, in September 2015 with virtually simultaneous dosing in London and Vancouver. The trial was focused mainly on safety, and then we started increasing the doses and turned it into a phase two study. And I'm pleased to tell you that everyone's been dosed. We're just completing the last few patients, and there have been no safety concerns at all. We're measuring mutant Huntington protein in the spinal fluid of our patients to look at what, if we can lower the mutant Huntington protein in response to the ASO treatment. So showing that we directly get to the bad guy. The trial started in September 2015. It was the first trial of a Huntington lowering agent targeting the Huntington message to enter human studies. 
And a press release from Ionis Pharmaceuticals came out recently in June, and I think it's important to say that enrollment was complete, that the trial had completed, there were no safety concerns, and that everyone in the trial was going to be rolled into an open label extension, which means they all get the active drug. And I think that was hugely important because it, was show, it showed that the drug so far was safe and tolerated, and now all the patients are going to get the active drug. Roche, who's Ionis's partner, is a very big pharmaceutical company, continues to advance and support the program. And I think this is important because recently, as Francis mentioned, for the first time if for a neurode neurodegenerative or neurological disease, the FDA gave rapid approval for the first ASO drug for spinal muscular atrophy. And this is a devastating disease of children, of babies. And normally children will die by the age of two from this form of spinal muscular atrophy. But the ASO, which has been delivered into the spinal fluid of these children, has had remarkable results. And actually, I was at a meeting recently in San Diego where they showed videos of children who would normally not be alive at the age of two who were riding a bicycle. So this is really very exciting for neurological diseases because an ASO has been shown to target a neurological disease and be benefit. So it gives us hope for Huntington's disease. We have different challenges. This was children, and we're targeting the adult human brain. So where are we? These are the timelines. This is today. The open label extension where all the patients get the active drug is, is just about to start. We'll be announcing the trial results in early 2018. And Roche have the option to take this forward to a phase three worldwide 600 person study to find out if this slows the progression of Huntington's disease, both in patients with, the sympt with symptoms of the disease and also for future prevention trials. And this is really the lifetime of a Huntington's disease mutation carrier. You're born with essentially healthy cells, they start malfunctioning, and the disease begins. You're born with no symptoms, and then as the cells, as your cells and your brain begin to malfunction, you develop symptoms. We have a genetic test which allows us to identify people many years before onset. And Francis beautifully outlined the discovery of the genetic test through the HDF. And I think what we want to be able to do, and this is our hope and our plans for future big studies, is to take drugs like the ASO, treat people decades before they show signs of the disease, and hopefully prevent the disease ever occurring or slow onset of the disease. And our aim is eventually to treat young people and prevent the disease ever occurring. So one day we will be in a position, we hope, to be able to, tr to treat Huntington's disease and to prevent it. And this will be future trials in young HD gene carriers. That's the aim. It's the aim of the current plan of the drug development of the ASO. And I have another quote, but from a different, uh, from an eminent uh, 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 English politician, Winston Churchill. So I, uh, well, I was asked to uh, uh, give some advice to people that I mentor, and uh, I used a Winston Churchill quote, which I use for myself, which is never, never, never give up. But this is a different one. This is not the end. This is not, this is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. And I hope as we move towards treatments, real treatments for Huntington's disease. And thank you for listening.